Maryland's eastern shore is home to some of the oldest farms in America. This land has been in Bob Fitzgerald's family since the 17th century. Now, he says, big changes are taking place. All this, you can see where I planted this with soybeans and, and they just died. You know, they died when the water hit them. Tidal flooding and saltier groundwater are hitting farmers from above and below, and the losses are accelerating with climate change. You just can't believe how it's taken things over in the last 15 or 20 years. I can show you land around here that people raised tomatoes on when I was a little boy, and now it's, it's gone. And these houses periodically get salt water on them. A short drive from Fitzgerald's home, some neighbors have surrendered their farms as salt water seeps deeper and deeper inland. Basically, they've had to give up on this whole area because the salt took it over. Now we go down here to this farm, it's already been abandoned and turned into a wildlife area. Kate Tully is a farm ecologist at the University of Maryland. She hopes to help farmers hold on to their land as the sea encroaches. So when I realized we had this big issue with saltwater intrusion, it seemed natural to sort of come down, start talking to farmers, and then starting to build out plots like this. These test plots will help farmers figure out what they can grow as the soil gets saltier. Sorghum is one possibility to help feed the region's $3.4 billion poultry industry. Sorghum is my new favorite crop because it can grow without rain and it can grow with lots of rain. So this is actually a pretty, looks like a pretty good option. But farming the land may not be the best option. Another choice, Tully says, is to surrender to nature. So you could actually restore the land back to a wetland. And some farmers are doing that because duck hunting is very popular down here. So they're trying to, you know, sort of encourage the waterfowl to come back and then they can either use the land to hunt or they can lease the hunting rights. Tully and her colleagues are just starting to figure out what will make the most financial sense to sustain communities that have been farming this land for centuries. There's a lot of history there, and as these seas rise, some of that history is going underwater. And I just find that like to be a, like a pretty moving, pretty motivating reason to try to figure out what we can do for these farmers. But the clock is ticking. I'd say in the next 20 years, you're going to lose a very high percentage of that land that's going to be unfit to farm. It's a fate that coastal farms around the world face as the seas continue to rise. Steve Barragona, VOA News, Princess Anne, Maryland.